We are at the Mobile World Congress with the Think Silicon. So, hello, so who are you? I'm George Zidroblos, co founder and uh, CEO of Think Silicon. And uh, who are you? Uh, I'm Yuli Muller, I'm Vice President Marketing. And uh, Think Silicon, you say here, it's the world's most power efficient GPU. Is that true? Of course. <laughs> so, you're making GPU? Yes, we are doing uh, graphics processors for extremely low power applications, uh, like smartwatches or smart glasses. And we are beating the competition uh, in terms of power, cost, and performance. How do you do this? Uh, we have a secret sauce in different domains. Uh, one of the very important parts is the compression of the data. So we compress everything, we shrink everything, uh, and we also shrink the, the hardware and the software. So here you have some demos. Can you show what, what you have here? So yes, yeah, sure. I mean, what we have in here from right to left Right on the right side, you see here our uh, GPU, our 2.5D GPU on a FPGA board, and uh, you can see here is a classic, a classical smartwatch uh, face. What you can see here, what we can drive, you know, what else we can do with certain others uh, applications we can run here. And here's a rotating clock, and here you see the 3D effect, you know. So what's really interesting here is, is that we don't need a lot of power for that, you know. So we basically built this architecture towards, like George already said, you know, to small display devices with 1.5 till 6 inch, you know. Here you have an instrument cluster even for automotive. You can drive an automotive display with that, yeah. So uh, low power, how low power, and how do you measure, do you show the difference? Yes. So how low can it go? Uh, for this kind of applications, we can go down to one milliwatt, the peak power. One milliwatt? In one milliwatt, yes. That sounds quite low, no? It is impressive, yes. This is one of the most important things, to have long battery life, right? That's you want to have uh, something that looks good, but uh, lasts for months. Yes. Actually, what we're trying to, to achieve is to have a, a user interface like your smartphone, but have it on your smartwatch, while the battery life is one or two weeks. While now, either you don't have, you have a poor experience on your smartwatch, either the battery life is uh, one day or even less. And uh, you have some other demo here? Wh which one is that? Yeah, so here, this is a very interesting project here. This is actually an FPGA yeah, from a Lattice, and we programmed this FPGA with our display graphic processor here and this is even smaller than what we've seen before it's a ultra small FPGA with just 5,000 LUTs and what we demonstrate here that we can drive a display yeah with uh, so little resources and it's battery powered you see it's not attached to any to any uh, or not connected to any device or to any uh, outlet and uh, this is usually used, you know, on uh, always on displays, what you have on a mobile phone, you know, which you have your data or uh, your date or your time, yeah. And here we're demoing um, certain kind of apps and applications, what you can do with that, you know. Here the battery, uh, the power consumption is even lower. It's even below one milliwatt. Below one milliwatt. So is the idea that potentially you could have uh, an always-on OLED display that running some nice animation even, uh, you know, all the time? Even the rest system uh, is totally powered off, so you can extend the, the battery level of the standby. Either you can have uh, very nice and fluid graphics while the system is on, uh, and keeping the consumption extremely low. And uh, do you have some customers doing this already, or is it uh, last, potential in the future? We had last week uh, a press release with uh, Seconds uh, Communications, a very big company in the LTE domain space. So they integrated an LTE modem and a system on chip based on an ARM processor and our GPU. Uh, we have the Lattice project now. Uh, one of our big customers is Microchips and, uh, and Dialog. All right. Since when do you do this? We do it for the last nine years. Nine? Yeah. Yeah. We built the, the, all the hardware, the software, the compilers, the processor, everything. Did you announce, did you say how many was shipped in total in nine years? How many? Yeah. Of Sorry. your uh, uh, end chips with that might have yours. Some, Are you not allowed to say or? Yes, we have some problems to talk okay, about. Okay, no need to say. Numbers. All right, but maybe millions. Does yeah, yeah, yeah. It's millions it's of devices out there. Yeah. You see it? Yeah. And the last part is that uh, beyond the GPU and the hardware, uh, we also give our customers an SDK to make them uh, make the, our GPUs very easy to use, 
and um, allow them to go very fast to the market, uh, decreasing the time of the application development. So here we have an example. This is a graphical user interface. Yeah. We don't have a. We don't have a. Don't have a mouse pad. A mouse pad. But uh, yeah. Uh, the, the usual case of the demo is not. Okay. Yeah. No problem. But then, uh, how does that work? I can go for the laptop. Okay. No problem. <laughs> it's disconnected. It's not a problem. It's so, so what is special about it? There's a UI. It's a UI which is very close to your mobile phone. There are some uh, 3D effects. There are some projections, so it's really high quality. And the differentiator is that uh, you can build this UI in a couple of hours or days instead of weeks or months uh, without using our tools. But what is the kind of software that runs this? It's our, our software, so we build this, we call it GUI Builder Toolkit, uh, and translates all the software to calls to our GPU. So it gets the benefit of the acceleration from our GPU in order to run this uh, user interface. So it's about compression, it's about optimal uh, uh, code optimizations? All is how to trans transform and uh, translate a graphical user interface to calls to our GPU in order to get the most benefit out of the GPU, all including right. everything, uh, hardware, uh, software, uh, compression, uh, whatever we offer. And here at the Mobile World Congress, you're looking for, uh, there's all kinds of potential customers, right? Uh, we have potential customers, uh, potential investors, uh, press coverage, so as a startup we need uh, some exposure. Uh, this is the place to be. What's the target? How big are you going to be? Well, um, saying uh, we want to be the next imagination would probably, you know, a very ambitious target, you know, but we want to be somewhere in between, you know, maybe between uh, Vivanti and Imagination, which is one of our competitors, you know. But uh, so you're going to have more products, more different GPUs? Uh, not only we have, we have our roadmap about uh, the GPUs and the next releases about the IP. Um, a very important part is that uh, using our technology, which is validated, we have a number of patents in several fields, and our major advantage is the low power. The question is how we can apply this technology to new kind of applications like virtual reality or augmented reality. And this will be a challenge for us. Can that's you run what, Android? Yes, we do. You, ha you do. We do? But then that's one on one of your bigger GPUs. Uh, you have some small and the bigger ones? It's the middle and the, the, the high end. All right. Cool. All right. So thanks a lot. And uh, there it is. Really People cute. can read more here about the stuff here. Yeah. Yeah.